Hey guys, Mr. T here. This is another video. This is one that's about the association between numerical variables. So we've seen in the previous video um, how you would display categorical variables. Now, numerical variables are different. Um, they're represented by numbers, and numbers have an inherent hierarchy. They mean something. One number is lower than another, and a number number is higher than another. They have an order. So, the association between numerical variables, variables that can be represented by numbers and they have a meaningful order, is typically shown on a scatter plot. Hopefully you're aware of what a scatter plot is, basically an X and a Y axis, X and Y and dots on it. The independent variable, the variable that we change on purpose in an experiment, is placed along the X axis and the dependent variable, the variable that changes because of the independent variable, um, is placed along the Y axis. Now, correlation. Correlation is a measure of the relationship or association between two numerical variables. So it's a measure of how how well two variables are associated with each other. Um, the measure of correlation has multiple aspects to consider. So there's multiple parts to this idea of correlation. The direction, linearity, strengths, outliers, and causation. That should probably be strength, but oh well, done now. So direction. One aspect of correlation is the direction of the relationship between the two variables. The direction refers to the shape the points on a scatter plot of the two variables form as they move to the right on the x-axis. So it's all in relation to when you're looking, going from left to right, whether they're going up or down. So if I was to show you um, a relationship in a positive direction, well the points on the scatter plot would be formed like this. So if I was to do like a a line that was sort of fitting with this trend of the points here, it would go up like this. And so you can see um, um, as points move to right, points move up, and that's a positive direction for a correlation. A negative direction would be opposite, um, so the dots would be like this, so the line showing the trend would be pointing down that direction as points move to the right. So as the x variable increases, points move down. So the main difference here is, as the x variable increases, the y variable also increases, so it's a positive correlation. In the negative direction of the correlation, as the points move to the right, as the x variable increases, the points move down, so the y variable decreases, and if there's no direction to the correlation, so the points are just, really what we're looking for here is randomly scattered like this. There's no particular direction. I couldn't really draw a line showing the trend there. Random scatter. You can't really say anything about as the x variable increases, the y variable also increases. You would say that's got no correlation, no direction there. All right, so that's one aspect of correlation. Uh, linearity is another aspect of correlation, and that's referring to the shape of the points formed in the scatter plot again. Um, but how well the shape looks like a straight line, basically. So if the points appear to form along a straight line, then we can claim the correlation is linear. So if we had points that look something like this, so similar to before, Um, you could um, basically draw a line through those because it fits the trend of those points well. You could say that's roughly linear, uh, straight line best approximates the shape the points form. Therefore, linear correlation there. 
a nonlinear trend is whenever the um, the points form a shape that is not a straight line. So they can form a pattern, but just as long as it's not a straight line, then it would be called nonlinear. So um, this is a relationship. There's actually a mathematical name for this kind of relationship, but it doesn't form. It's not a straight line. So you wouldn't call it linear. Okay? That's something that we may, we may cover in the future. But a straight line does not best approximate this relationship, this shape. So it's non-linear. There might be a different way to describe that um, relationship, but it's um, beyond this particular topic. So just keep that in mind. If it's not a straight line, that is non-linear. Strength is another aspect of um, correlation. Once a pattern in the shape of the points is identified, so we talked about linear or non-linear patterns, um, but this has nothing to do with when there's no pattern at all. That's just no correlation in the first place, so you don't need to go beyond that. Um, they're just randomly associated, so there's no point in talking about strength or anything there. But if you have a clear pattern, like a line or a curve, one other aspect of correlation is the strength of the correlation. And that refers to how closely the points on the scatter plot lie to that shape. So what I was drawing previously was a red line sort of showing the general shape of the points, a curved red line here showing the general shape of the points. Strength refers to how closely the dots fit with that identified trend. So the strength of a correlation is often described as strong, moderate, or weak, and that is in reference to how closely the points follow that trend. So if I had a strong, positive, linear trend, well, the trend would be going up and to the right, because as the x... Um, variable increases, so does the y. And if I wanted to show, and it's a linear relationship because the line is a straight line. If I wanted to show a strong relationship, a uh, strong correlation, then the points would lay very close to this trend identified. If it was a perfect um, correlation, the, the most strongest correlation possible, then those points would all lie exactly on the line. It's just strong, so they're just very close to it. Um, if we had a negative linear correlation, well, we've already established that a negative correlation is when one of the variables increases, the other decreases. So in this case, the x variable is increasing, the y variable is decreasing. It's linear, so it's a straight line trend that we've identified, but it's only a moderate strength correlation. So those points, they are still sort of following the trend line, but they're a bit further away. They're a bit more scattered than the strong trend, the strong correlation, sorry. And lastly, a weak positive nonlinear, for example. Let's draw a nonlinear trend here. So a, a curved line, we've identified that the points follow this curve. Um, that's a positive relationship because as it goes across to the right, it increases. But it's a very weak trend, so maybe the points are very much scattered far away from the line. And so basically it's kind of a stretch for us to be saying that that trend even fits because the points are so scattered anyway. So really strength refers to the closeness of the points to on a trend that you've identified in the... Um, in the points on the scatter plot. So just summing up this um, trend as not x as x increases, so does y. That's the positive linear trend. Um, trend bits. A straight line. So that is also the positive linear trend. And why is it strong? Points very close 
to trend line here what's the trend as x increases y decreases trend still fits a straight line um, points are moderately scattered about the trend line so they're not like right on top of it or very close to it they're a bit further away lastly trend as x increases y increases but trend fits a curve and points are very scattered about the trend line so it's a weak correlation so hopefully that um, enlightens you with how you would refer to the strength of correlations almost done outliers are another part of correlations we need to consider Outliers are points in the data that lay far away from the trend established by the main body. It's not necessarily just points that lie far away from other points. It's points that lay far away from other um, from the trend that most of the points um, establish. So if we looked at this here, we have this trend line in red. It's a negative linear trend. This is the main body of the data here. And the main body of the data establishes this um, negative linear trend. We have this point isolated, but it's isolated, but it is on trend. Therefore, not an outlier. So even though it's far away, it fits with the trend established by the main body of the data, so it's legit. Whereas these two here, um, I'll write that over here, um, isolated points, not on trend, therefore outliers because they're quite far away from that main trend line. Now, if outliers are determined to be a result of a recording or graphing error, so you know they came from a mistake, they should be ignored, discarded. So these would be crossed out, and your actual trend line with all these points, the, the strength of that correlation would be stronger because you're ignoring these which came from mistakes. But if an outlier is identified to be genuine, it wasn't due to a mistake, you can't find the mistake that was made, it wasn't an error, then you have to keep it because it's genuine, it's a, it's a legit piece of data, so you'll have to explain that in another way, not just ignore it. And lastly, causality. It's really important to note that even if you have strong correlation between two variables, that doesn't necessarily mean that changes in one variable definitively cause changes in the other. You have to understand the difference between correlation, it's an association between two variables, it could just be a coincidence, it could be more than that, but that's different um, from correlation to causation, which is where one variable definitively causes changes in the other variable. When you find a strong correlation, you need to do further research um, to actually determine whether there's a causal relationship between those variables and conclude that one variable causes changes in the other. Often these days, too many people find a correlation and then suddenly um, deem it to be causation without looking further, and that's why you end up with people that have no idea what they're talking about, telling other people what to do. So hopefully this video sort of helps you out with the language around correlations and the different aspects of correlation, and I'll see you in the next one.